Hello everyone! I'm excited to share my latest project with you, created using Blender and Philogix PBR Painter. In just 30 minutes, I textured this amazing piece, and now I'm here to break down the process for you. I'll be explaining the different layers I used in Philogix PBR Painter, showcasing how this powerful add-on enhances material creation in Blender. What makes Philogix PBR Painter truly outstanding is its compatibility with both Eevee and Cycles, along with its extensive material library and brushes, making complex material creation a breeze. I completed this project using the latest version of the add-on, Philogix PBR Painter 4.1, which is available for free. You can find the download link in the comments section below. Before we dive into the main content, don't forget to subscribe and follow my channel for more helpful tips and tricks on texturing in Blender. All right, let's get started. I'll walk you through each layer of the material. As you can see on the far left of the layer, there's an icon representing the layer type. Next, you have the option to hide or show the layer, the layer's name, and on the far right, there's a color to mark the layer in the shader editor if you need to edit it. However, when working with Philogix PBR Painter, you won't need to worry about the shader editor at all. You just need to focus on the visual layer system here, which is a significant advantage of this add-on. In the first layer, the base layer, it's simply about creating a smart material layer. Just select a suitable material, adjust the layer parameters to fit, and you're all set. For the camo layer, I only wanted to modify the color and the metallic properties of the material. So, I created a custom layer for this purpose. Inside the base color channel of this layer, I added a smart surface layer and selected the camo color. In the layer mask of the camo layer, I created an ID layer. The ID layer serves the purpose of converting the colors of the ID map into a black and white map. White in the layer mask channel means the areas where the camo layer can be displayed on top of the layer below, while black areas have the opposite effect. I followed a similar approach for creating the carbon, iron, red, and glass layers. The key here is to adjust the parameters appropriately, ensuring that the material properties are realistically represented. Setting values too high or too low can make the material look artificial. The human brain can easily discern these subtleties. It can give viewers a sense of artificiality automatically, even without a deep understanding of the technical details. For the decal layer, I created a white material layer with high roughness and low metallic properties, as this layer represents white paint. In the layer mask, I specified the areas where the decal layer should appear using images. These images serve as the symbols I want to paint on the object. To position them correctly, I adjusted the layer's UV projection. UV projection determines how a layer is applied to an object. By choosing the decal projection type, the layer adheres to the object as if we we're applying decals, always parallel and sticking onto the surface. It's very convenient, isn't it? Don't forget to enable the culling projection option, or else the layer will be projected infinitely, even penetrating through the object's backside. For the rust layer, there's a smart material available in the library that allows us to create realistic rust based on a baked texture. So, I simply selected this smart material and adjusted the parameters to achieve the desired effect. I want the edges of the object to have a worn paint effect, revealing a shiny metallic layer underneath. To achieve this, I'll create a glossy metallic layer first. To define the areas where this layer appears, particularly in regions of the object that have outward curves, similar to real-life scenarios where such curved areas are prone to wear due to external forces, I'll add smart surface layers for this purpose. Using Paint Peeling Edge, it will add random abrasions along the edges of the object. Additionally, I'll use a Curvature Bake Map. Since the Curvature Bake Map lacks the intensity I desire, I'll add a Color Ramp Filter layer selecting Clipping for the Curvature Bake Map layer so it only affects the Curvature Bake Map. You'll have a clearer view of this when I switch to the Layer Mask View Mode. Finally, there's the Dust layer, placed on top as it's the most delicate layer. 
and can be removed at any time. I'll create a layer with dust properties, such as a slightly faded and dark color, very low gloss, and non-metallic properties. In the layer mask of this layer, I'll add a falling dust layer, providing us with a quick way to simulate dust settling on the object's surface. Additionally, I'll incorporate an image layer here, with an alpha channel set to zero. This allows me to apply the dust layer by painting in white, and conversely, prevent the dust from showing up by painting in black where I don't want it to appear. So I've just completed the analysis of the object's material layers today. I hope that the detailed instructions on creating materials in Blender, using Philogix PBR Painter, will help you enhance your design skills. Don't hesitate to experiment and explore with new features and tools. Keep being creative and delivering impressive artworks. We'll meet again in the next tutorials. Wishing you a wonderful and inspiring day in your creative endeavors.